Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence and Jungian MBTI typology. Is there a connection between these two things? I believe there is. I do want to say that artificial intelligence itself is something that does not think, it does not feel, it does not sense, it doesn't have intuition. It does none of these things. It has no experience of these functions. However, it may, to a certain degree, mimic these types of functions. So what I believe is that artificial intelligence could represent the viewpoint of a certain kind of cognitive function, and that certain types are more likely to predominate in creation of artificial intelligence, or in terms of the philosophy behind artificial intelligence, that this philosophy is represented by one function more than the other functions. So when I look at Carl Jung's work, when I'm looking at his descriptions of the different cognitive functions, what really stands out is how similarly the philosophy behind artificial intelligence and how it's designed is similar to the expert thinking perspective, even more so than introvert thinking perspective. So obviously, artificial intelligence belongs under the realm of science, right? So science is predominated by thinking types. There's feeling types in science, but even the feeling types who are operating under science, they're, they're operating within a thinking principle. Because thinking is about uh, deduction, is about analysis, is about formulas, is about calculation. Artificial intelligence does none of these things, but it comes from, it's designed based off of these thinking kind of principles, definitely more so than feeling principles. Anyway, I want to get back to Carl Jung's writing piece. I think it's really interesting. Like I was reading the descriptions of the functions and it's like, wow, when you read the, this, the description of expert thinking, how much it resonates, how much it corresponds with the philosophy behind artificial intelligence. Against artificial intelligence itself is not expert thinking, but there's people who designed artificial intelligence. There's, there's a mindset behind artificial intelligence, which is very much expert thinking. So Carl Jung writes about how expert thinking collects and absorbs a lot of indigestible facts, facts and factoids, a lot of data absorbs it to determine how to make things work. That artificial intelligence obviously very much embraces that kind of philosophy of absorbing tons of data, kind of being able to mimic how humans do things to kind of figure out how to, to make something function like a human being. The other thing that stands out in Carl Jung's writing is that the tendency of expert thinking to deduce things down to formulas. And what he writes is that sometimes what expert thinking does is that it takes something and kind of like reduces it down to a basic principle. Like, this is nothing but this. And the example that he gives is that in sciences, especially at his time, everything kind of gets reduced down to energy. Everything is made up of energy. And he actually kind of complains about this tendency of expert thinking to do this and its predominance in the, in the field of science. So you see that with artificial intelligence that it kind of boils things down into basic formulas. You have like general formulas that kind of work for most cases. And then with more nuanced cases in life itself or how things work, then you create more nuances within that formula, little formulas within that formula in order to capture how everything works or supposedly capture how everything works. So this is how Carl Jung describes expert thinking. It's very much the model by which artificial intelligence is based on in terms of its construction. So if artificial intelligence belongs under expert thinking, how come it doesn't belong under introvert thinking? So I've been looking at the work of Noam Chomsky, who's obviously in INTP. And one thing that you notice is that he critiques artificial intelligence quite a lot, because obviously how artificial intelligence is designed right now is com not coming from an introvert thinking place. It's coming more from an expert thinking place. His critique is that what happens is that we use this system by which artificial intelligence work to kind of assume a deeper understanding of human consciousness. So this is like when expert thinking kind of goes too far 
in terms of being naive. So the vast majority of expert thinkers, they have, you know, a better development into your thinking, they want to understand how things work at a deeper level. But when it's very one dimensional, and there's no development of the intro thinking side, in terms of the thinking realm is a very lopsided kind of development here. What happens is that there's a mistake of basically mistaking the data as the deeper understanding or philosophy of how things work. You can see even in title itself, it's not machine learning, it's artificial intelligence. This is by collecting a lot of data about how humans do things, you know how consciousness works. You know how humans understand the world. And Noam Chomsky says, no, you're not even close to that. You're simply mimicking human behavior without having a deeper understanding. So where extra thinking could kind of, you know, when it's lopsided, then it might take that approach and kind of assume that the data represents reality. And you can see that in movements in history uh, in, within science where when science becomes very just data driven, for instance, like behaviorism, it kind of assumes by just looking at external behavior that you understand how people work, but it only works in a very, very limited degree. So you need introvert thinking, understanding to kind of be able to figure out how things work at a deeper, more fundamental level. The one thing that Noam Chomsky criticizes about artificial intelligence, and much like the critique about expert thinking is, again, there's full of indigestible facts. And it's just together, right? It's not pieced together elegantly into a, a true system of understanding. And he makes this really great point in which he says, we are not a statistical machine that's just lugging around a lot of data in order to make decisions in our lives. Not at all. In fact, we're able as human beings to do things with very little data. In fact, we have a terrible memory. So it doesn't quite work that way. How artificial intelligence is right now is more machine learning is not really understanding the deeper levels of human consciousness, how we work. Human consciousness is still very much a mystery. Artificial intelligence itself is not simply expert thinking field. There's actually a lot of introvert thinking in it. In fact, the initial approach when it comes to artificial intelligence, it was a very introvert thinking approach, trying to have the machine to kind of come up with that deeper understanding about how things work, the basic principles, but like at that deeper thinking level and kind of like figure things out from there. But they realize it's not efficient because introvert thinking is not an efficient function. Extra thinking is an efficient function. So the idea is like you just collect a lot of data through a lot of trial and error. You just have that machine focus on the objective. And by simply getting the machine to focus on the objective, voila, it's able to play Pong, is able to play soccer, and pass the bar exam. So what I would say here is that it's impressive how well doing things in this matter works. And we could see the impressive results of AI, but it's also very impressive how much it does not work and how much this whole thing is being hyped up. And this is where we come to the shadow side of expert thinking as it is expressed through artificial intelligence. Be sure to check out my critiques of AI, which does not mean that I don't think AI has its benefits, how AI does not democratize creativity, and how AI causes an imbalance between art and science. And also my interview with Eric Thor on AI. You can find the articles in this interview down below in the description box. So first of all, I want to state the positives. So Carl Jung speaks about the expert thinking type as having the archetype of the human humanitarian worker by designing these formulas and kind of making things more efficient. It works really hard to make humanity better, improving technologies that enhance the conditions of humankind, improvements in medicine, and of course, helping me not to get lost because now I have the GPS, I have such a terrible sense of direction and AI helps me be able to find my way around. So I am basically look at artificial intelligence as basically the extension of the virtues of technology. And technology is basically the extension of the virtues of expert thinking. And obviously, we know that science brings its good and also its bad. And um, expert thinking is basically just a tool. And so is artificial intelligence. It's just a tool. The issue is when expert thinking starts to become the worldview, and that leads to scientism. 
And when that comes into play, then artificial intelligence will have its harms and also have its dangers as well. So I don't think there's something wrong with artificial intelligence. I just think within the structures at play, there is not enough balance between the different functions. Look at Carl Jung's work. It's all about finding that sense of balance between opposites. And right now, at least in the realm of science, expert thinking and its philosophy has a lot of value, but there's a little bit of imbalance here. The way this technology is being developed, there's not enough input from other functions. And I emphasize here in this particular video, the input of introverted thinking. So obviously efficiency is positive, but it's not an end all and be all. And when extra thinking kind of engages in that reductionism, like basically says efficiency, good, whether whatever is faster and stronger is good, right? The sense of pragmatism, like whatever works is good. That works for a lot of cases, but you know, this could potentially escalate into something that is not great. And I also want to emphasize not just in, in terms of like um, the risk to humanity, but also the harms along the way. I feel like right now there is an imbalance of functions when it comes to artificial intelligence. You need introverted thinking to kind of come up with a more elegant solution of how to use this technology. We need that deeper understanding and may not be efficient, but efficiency is not everything because we could efficiently uh, drive ourselves off a cliff or something like that, or we could efficiently create harms in the here and now, just not in the future towards different groups of people. So I think it's very important to have this expert thinking grounded in the other functions. And later on, I'm going to talk about in another video, the shadow feeling side of this whole entire artificial intelligence thing that is going on right now. So extra thinking kind of gets into that reduction mode, like uh, whatever is efficient is that equals improvement. Uh, that equals like, you know, whatever is artificial intelligence is bringing us is capturing what it means to be human and things like that. So you need interesting thing to really question that. And we need to kind of like slow things down a bit. So Noam Chomsky really argues for um, the role of introverted thinking in the design of artificial intelligence because he says, you know, otherwise you have risks. So, you know, it's impressive to the degree that extra thinking behind artificial intelligence is working, but because it does not really truly deeply understand language at a deeper level, the issue is like, you know, it could work 75% of the time. Like the, I guess the, it's not Noam Chomsky, but someone who was with him in a in a conference had argued that, you know, you could have a robot bring your grandpa onto the bed and maybe it works 75% of the time, but 25% of the time it doesn't work because it doesn't understand something at that deeper level. And we mistake it as it can understand. And with all that hype, you know, that causes issues. So as I said, there's nothing wrong with expert thinking in itself. Um, expert thinking is just kind of doing its own thing through technology. So what it does is that this function is focused on the objective, which is a strength, but it's also a weakness too, because often it can become black and white and it does not question its objective. And that's where interesting thinking comes in to balance it all out. Unfortunately, not due to the fault of expert thinking in itself, the structures in society reward expert thinking a bit too much that causes an imbalance of the functions. So uh, right now, what's predominating is corporate structures and uh, capitalism, right? Not, not bad in itself. In fact, they have their place and it can be good. But this, when this corporate capitalist thing gets combined with scientism, this too much faith in the promise of technology, that kind of creates a bit of blindness. And what happens is that expert thinking ceases to be a tool and starts to become a predominant worldview. So I do know that there's a lot of lip service being paid to this idea that artificial intelligence is just a tool, right? But it's not being treated that way. There is a bit of enmeshment with this worldview that it will inevitably bring out the improvement of humankind. And that's why we should be going along this extra judging train track, right? It's There's good things about it, but there's also 
bad things. And not just in the sense that AI can kill people like um, AI driven uh, cars, but also it's important to keep in mind our quality of life and our work and basically living life in a kind of meaningful way. And I think the other functions have a lot to say about how to create a good quality of life. It takes a combination of all the functions, not what extra thinking thinks about that. So yes, I believe we need intro thinking to balance out extra thinking, such as knowing that simply because AI could pass bar exam is not as smart as a lawyer, it doesn't have the same level of conscious ability as a lawyer has. We need the input of all of the functions to be able to inform us what kind of life we would like to lead. And we don't want simply expert thinking to be leading the charge here. We want this function to be working as a team with all the other functions. So be sure to stay tuned because I'll be making a video about the shadow feeling side of all this artificial intelligence stuff that's going on. So click like and subscribe if you enjoy this content.